Imagine being in the Andromeda galaxy, but you need to return back to Earth. This is what the journey would look like. There are around 1 trillion stars in the Andromeda galaxy, compared with the Milky Way, which has around 200 to 400 billion stars. The average distance to the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years, or 778 kiloparsecs. Our own galaxy would appear tiny from that distance. Even if you fly faster than light, it's almost impossible to collide with a star, but you will be bombarded with particles drifting through space. Warning. Low temperature and cosmic radiation detected. Without a spacesuit, you would lose consciousness in about 15 seconds, die after 90 seconds, and freeze solid within 12 to 26 hours. The Andromeda Galaxy is predicted to collide with the Milky Way in 4.5 billion years. This collision will initiate a process that will eventually merge the two galaxies into a single, large galaxy. During this event, stars within both galaxies are unlikely to collide directly due to the vast distances between them, but the gravitational forces will significantly reshape both galaxies. Though it's far away, Andromeda is the most distant object visible to the naked eye from Earth. On a clear, dark night, it appears as a faint, blurry spot in the constellation Andromeda. By the time the Milky Way and Andromeda collide, the Sun will have evolved into a red giant and Earth may not be habitable. Therefore, the collision will likely have little direct impact on our planet. On average, it's believed that each star in the Milky Way has at least one planet. Some stars have multiple planets, similar to our solar system, which has eight known planets. Estimates range from 100 billion to 400 billion planets. As of now, astronomers have confirmed the existence of over 5,500 exoplanets, planets outside our solar system. On average, the distance between stars you see is about 5 light years, or 47 trillion kilometers. The average density of stars in our part of the galaxy is about 0.004 stars per cubic light year. After traveling 24 quintillion kilometers, you have finally arrived in the solar system. Look at that. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it is everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The Earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only known world so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. Warning. Large object ahead. Impact is imminent. You are now entering the exosphere, the outermost layer of Earth's atmosphere. It extends up to about 10,000 kilometers above Earth and gradually fades into the vacuum of space. The atmosphere below 100 kilometers includes the densest parts of Earth's atmosphere, where weather occurs and meters burn up. Upon entering the atmosphere, the acceleration is balanced out by atmosphere drag. The drag produced drastically slows you down, but these forces also heat you up drastically. Soon, you would reach terminal velocity, which is around 200 to 300 km per hour in a belly-to-earth position. The descent from orbit 
could take about 30 to 45 minutes, but this is under controlled conditions, with proper re-entry systems. As the atmosphere becomes denser, the air in front of you gets compressed, creating a shockwave. This shockwave generates a lot of heat, which can reach thousands of degrees Celsius. The atmosphere is composed of 78% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen, along with trace amounts of other gases. These gases are crucial for supporting life, protecting the planet from harmful solar radiation and regulating temperature. As you fall through the atmosphere, you encounter water vapor and strong turbulent winds. In the troposphere, which is the lowest layer where weather occurs 0 to 15 km, temperature decreases with altitude. With each kilometer you fall, the temperature increases about 6.5 degrees Celsius per 1 km. The air is warmed by the Earth's surface, so the closer you are to the surface, the warmer it becomes. You will keep sinking like that until you reach the seafloor. 